So the magic rod stands for magnetically expandable controlled rod. So it's a new system in which the patient's rod expansion occurs via a magnetic system. We've known about the magic rod for quite some time because of its use in Europe and other parts of the world. Uh, obviously, the United States, we didn't have the ability to use this technology until March of 2014. Uh, so we've been anxiously awaiting the opportunity, and it's been nice over the last few months to actually be able to work with it uh, and to put it in action. I think the advantage that the magic rod gives us isn't surgical advantage, it's the fact that we can avoid repeat surgeries after we've placed it. So usually with growing spine instrumentation, you plan on bringing your patient back to the operating room every, depending on the patient, six to 12 months. And then you have to you know, make another incision, you have to lengthen the rod, there's a chance of infection, there's a chance you could have a complication from anesthesia. So the advantage comes in the fact that you can avoid those repeat surgical episodes and repeat anesthetics. You can just do your lengthenings in clinic and then the other advantage is in the lengthening, not only being non-invasive, but because of that, you can do it more frequently. The spine doesn't grow every six months, it grows every day. And the frequency of lengthening will probably turn out to be a very useful way to continue to grow the spine in a more effective manner. I mean, that's, that to me is, you know, fantastic. And it's, it's a lot more holistic approach towards you know, my job and what we do. I'm excited that we can use this technology. I don't think that all centers are able to because of the cost of the device. Uh, and so it's nice to be able to work at a hospital like Scottish Rite where we have the ability to utilize a technology that's like this, that's new, that's expensive but very promising if we think it's in the best interest of our patients. Viviana was the first patient that had the magic rod placed here, and we anticipated some apprehension and concern and some anxiety about the lengthening portion of it. So we employed our child life people to come down, our nursing staff, talk to the family, talk to the, to the parents, and uh, she was really apprehensive. But as soon as she saw that it was really straightforward, she calmed down and uh, everything went very smoothly. Okay, it's okay, here we go. Feel okay? The subsequent lengthening that we did on her uh, about six weeks after the first one, she came in and she had absolutely no uh, problems whatsoever. And in fact, she was able to tell the patient uh, that was undergoing it for the first time, everything would be okay. So it's really, it was really great to see her first experience uh, really impact her second experience in a very fruitful way. Every time we see a child with scoliosis, just like we always do now, we you know, say what type of you know, scoliosis do they have and what's the best treatment option for them. And now the magic rod is in that conversation. So in my head, I always say, is this a patient who we, sh you know, we should you know, put the magic rod in? Or is there some other tool that is more suited to get them their best outcome? But it wasn't even in the conversation a year ago. I think the magic rod is potentially a game changer for uh, those patients who need growing rods because it's a one procedure as opposed to one procedure to implant it and multiple, multiple times coming to the hospital, being an inpatient, undergoing anesthetic. Early onset scoliosis, again, is such a challenging problem because it's dealing with this over a period of a decade of a child's growth. If a child needs spinal surgery at an age of three or four or five years old, like many of our patients do, and they're going to grow until they're 14 or 15, that's obviously a, a long time to be treating them for the scoliosis that's going to require multiple reoperations with traditional treatment. So if the magic rod is, uh, is as effective as we hope it can be, then what we will hopefully do is be diminishing the number of surgeries these children have, which would obviously be a tremendous improvement for the patient, for their families, and for us. I think one of the beauties of Texas Scottish Rite Hospital is the fact that we are always seeing and participating in new ideas, uh, understanding what's new out there. So we're always on the cusp of what's new. And together with that, you also have to have a little bit of a understanding of new technology as new potential advantages, but really looking to see what the results are. And that's what I think this hospital does best, and that is to understand as new technology comes out, what are the problems with that? I think like all new technologies, we're going to find that it, uh, it's got an appropriate use, and I think that's what we are very good at here at this hospital, is trying to find the right tool for the right patient. 
So I don't think this is going to be a universal implant that it's going to be perfect for all patients, but I think that it's going to be a very nice, useful part of the treatment options that we have to treat this very, very challenging problem. This is a new, exciting tool. It's going to have great advantages in reality, but the potential advantages really need to be looked at carefully. And that's really important for us because ultimately the patient will benefit from these great new inventions. Texas Scottish Rite Hospital for Children, giving children back their childhood.